If you're unfamiliar with the app Notion, individuals and teams across the globe are adopting it in droves to organize their work and personal lives. And Notion's unique blend of features creates a foundation on which users craft custom workspaces for cohesively managing projects, relationships, finances, events, travel, goals, you name it. And its polished interface and rich database formats really give a sense of pleasure to these otherwise dull administrative initiatives. And personally, Notion has become the operating system of my life and my business. In fact, Notion now makes up the bulk of my work. I publish resources to my website, Notion VIP, and to my YouTube channel, including my Bulletproof methodology, which is the most widely employed framework and top-selling template among Notion users. I also consult enterprise users, and I actually developed Notion's official consultant certification in addition to training their global support team. And now we're working on a certification for everyday users. And my new course, Notion A to Z, will offer a comprehensive prep experience and dive deeper into the concepts we'll explore within this video. So. Notion is adored by its users, but they've long griped about its inability to connect with other apps. That is, until the spring when Notion's API entered public beta. And that began a flood of official integrations with other apps and introduced Notion to automation tools like Integramat, where users can construct sequences of triggers and actions which often incorporate other apps. So let's explore the features that make Integramat so uniquely powerful when it comes to automating Notion. And then we'll walk through the practical example of a personalized mass email sent directly from Notion. So in case you're unfamiliar with Integramat and other automation services, they're like visual interfaces for APIs where non-developers can automate actions and connect apps with other apps to exchange information and make updates. Users construct sequences of triggers and actions, which often include intermediate functions that control flow and manipulate information. And in Integramat, these sequences are called scenarios. So in the case of Notion, one of the most common automations is to sync a database with a Google Calendar, where one trigger would be a new event created in Google Calendar, and then the action would be to create that event in a Notion database. And I dive much deeper into integrations and automation sequences in my post specifically about Notion's API debut, which I'll link to within the description of this video. These automation services offer many of the same essential functions, but their interfaces and advanced capabilities differ quite considerably. Integramat generally supports fewer apps than other common automation services, but experts agree that it's far more versatile and offers a more user-friendly interface. So here are some of Integramat's distinctive advantages over Zapier, which is its most common alternative. So Integramat's interface is quicker and generally more useful than Zapier's. You can easily visualize your full scenario which you construct by dragging and dropping modules that perform various functions. You can zoom in and out for a comprehensive perspective or to focus on a particular segment. And the auto align button repositions your modules for an optimal layout. And then within that interface, you can quickly add a filter by clicking the connection between modules, while Zapier requires a dedicated action using the internal filter app. And in Integramat, you can traverse your data through unlimited routes guided by an elaborate blend of conditions, whereas Zapier's AB splits are much more basic. Integramat makes it easy to work with a collection of items, such as a Notion database. Using the iterator module, you can automatically perform sequences on each item of the collection, and you can also merge items from disparate sources into a single collection using the aggregator module. And then for weekly and monthly triggers, Zapier supports just a single day of the week or month, but in Integramat, you can choose multiple days of the week or month. 
And when Integromat encounters an error retrieving or processing data, you can define precisely which actions to take for various conditions, whereas Zapier simply stops execution. And by viewing the flow of information as your Integromat scenario executes, you can see just how it works and identify any snags. And then as you build and test your scenario, you can run a single module just once to collect sample data and isolate errors. And then Zapier requires independent actions for applying functions to data from other actions. But in Integromat, you can use spreadsheet style functions whenever you reference a variable. And then lastly, Integromat allows you to leave explanatory notes throughout your scenario for yourself or for your collaborators. When it comes to Notion, Integromat's advantages extend even further. In Zapier, only new database items can trigger sequences, but Integromat allows you to trigger scenarios when database items are updated. That means only Integromat can facilitate a true two-way sync. So going back to the Google Calendar example, Zapier can add new items from a Notion database to a Google Calendar, but any updates to existing items will remain unreflected, whereas with Integromat, you can update an item and have that same update reflected in Google Calendar. And then Integromat also allows you to retrieve and modify the body contents of Notion pages and database items. Zapier works only with database properties. So say you have a member directory where each member's biography occupies the inner page. With Integromat, you can create a type form for members to populate their full profiles, including their biographies. Zapier only allows you to update database properties associated with the profile, leaving the inner page content blank. So let's look at an example that leverages some of Integromat's advantages. I'm going to walk through a system that allows you to send a bulk email that's prepared entirely in Notion and personalized for each recipient. So that's going to include two high-level elements, your Notion configuration and then the Integromat scenario. So in Notion, you're going to have two databases, the first being a database of people. Now, most workspaces have some variation of a people or a contacts database. So you can certainly tap into that for your email recipients. But for the sake of this simple demonstration, we'll use an independent database called recipients that includes the properties essential to our bulk emails, including the email address and then the first name for personalization, as well as a relation property that connects this database to our other database, which is bulk emails. So in that database, our title property is going to be the subject line of the email. And then we have a date property to indicate the send date of the email. A select property allows us to indicate the status of the email. And then we have our reciprocal relation property where we can choose each email's recipients from our recipients database. So if you open up any item of this bulk emails database, this is where we're going to compose the content of the email body. And we have a bulk email template that we can click. And when we do that, it's going to populate with a synced block containing a toggle. And within that toggle, we have a quick reference for common HTML tags, which we use to add formatting to the text of our email. So I have an email copied. I'm going to paste it here. And when I do so, you can see that we have a few different blocks. Each block is a standard text block. And each of these text blocks represent a paragraph of the email. So again, to add any formatting to this text, we use these HTML tags, which we can reference in this toggle within this synced Block. And if we make any changes to this synced block, because it's a synced block, any change is going to be reflected in all instances of that synced block. So we also have for the first name here, a placeholder within these brackets. And this is where we have our personalized content. 
And what our Integromat configuration is going to do is replace this placeholder with the value from the recipient's first name property. So let's take a look at how that Integromat scenario is configured. In our bulk emails database, when we update the status of an item to sending, Integromat is going to send it to each related recipient with the first name personalized. And to do that, the scenario includes eight modules and one filter. The scenario is scheduled to run every 15 minutes. And what it's going to do every 15 minutes is execute the first module, which is a Notion module. And its action is to watch database items. So this one's configured to watch the bulk emails database. And anytime an item is updated or created, the scenario is going to execute. And what it's going to do for the updated item is run it through a filter and check to see the value of the status property. And if the status of the item is sending, it will proceed. Otherwise, it will not proceed. So if the status is sending, Integromat is going to execute another Notion module. This one is to list the page contents. And remember, this is an entirely unique advantage of Integromat. Zapier is unable to retrieve the inner page contents of a database item. So what it's going to do is use the page ID of the updated item to list its inner blocks. And it's going to return those inner blocks as a series of bundles. So each of those bundles will contain a variety of information structured as key value pairs. And ultimately what we're going to want is the plain text value of each block. We're going to want to merge those to form the HTML of our email body. So with those blocks retrieved as bundles, we're going to use another distinctive feature of Integromat, and that is the aggregator. So it's going to take all of those bundles and aggregate them into a nice data array that makes it much easier to work with. And the two values that we're going to retrieve for each bundle is the type and then the paragraph. That's going to contain information that we're going to need to work with. So the output of this aggregator is going to be an array. And for each item in the, the array, which represents a paragraph of our email, it's going to include the type and it's going to include the paragraph contents, which is another array, which ultimately will contain the plain text value. So moving on, we use Integromat's set variable module type. And this is going to have yet another distinctive advantage of Integromat. It's going to allow us to use inline functions to manipulate the data into a form that makes it easier to work with later in our scenario. So I won't get into all the details of this formula, but generally what it does is it takes our array and it applies the map function to it. And so what that map function does is it's going to return a reformatted array and that reformatted array is only going to contain those plain text values for each block and it's going to filter the blocks to include only those that have a plain text value or those that are of the paragraph type. So what we get after the map function is a new array that contains only the plain text values. So the join function is going to take that new array and combine all of those elements into a single text string. And between each of those elements, it's going to include a closing paragraph tag and an opening paragraph tag because each of those blocks represent a paragraph of our email. And then lastly, we just have an opening paragraph tag at the very beginning and a closing one at the very end. So 
with this set variable module that uses inline functions, we have converted the contents of our Notion page into a text string that functions as our email body. So the next step is to update the status of that updated email to sent because the subsequent modules are going to execute for each recipient. So we go ahead and update the status of this email to sent. This is a Notion block and the action is to update database item. And all we're doing here is changing that status from sending to sent. So the next step is to iterate through each recipient. And this is another distinctive feature of Integromat. So what it's going to do is it's going to take each value within the recipient property, which in Notion looks like a, a nice name of a contact, but Integromat sees that as a page ID. So what we're configuring here with this iterator module is we're just specifying the array that we want to iterate through. And in this case, it's the recipient's array and each item in that array is going to be a page ID. So each subsequent module in this scenario is going to execute for each recipient. So the first is going to be to retrieve the information for that recipient. So it's a notion module and the action is to get database items. So for each recipient, we're going to use its page ID to retrieve all of the properties associated with that. And from there, we can use the Gmail module to finalize the email, personalize it, and send it to the recipient. So it's going to use the recipient's email address as the destination address, and it's going to use the recipient's first name to replace that first name placeholder variable in the email body. And this once again is going to leverage that distinctive advantage of Integromat that allows us to use inline functions. In this case, we use the replace function to replace that first name placeholder with the actual first name of the recipient. So that completes our scenario where we can create a bulk email in Notion. We can choose recipients from a people database in Notion. And when we adjust that status of the email to sending, this Integromat scenario is going to execute and it's going to cycle through each of those recipients, personalize that email for them and send it to their inbox. So you can see through this example how Integromat is distinctively powerful when it comes to automating Notion. And if you have any questions or hit any roadblocks as you're experimenting with these concepts, please feel free to tweet at William Nutt.